When Yuzu shut down, many emulators rose to take its place. Some like Suyu, Sudachi and others. However, most didn't last long and were eventually shut down. One emulator that emerged during this time was the Citron emulator, a fork of Yuzu that promised to carry on the legacy of the Switch emulation. So today, Citron emulator has gotten its biggest update and that is what I'm going to talk about. So I'll be talking about its latest updates, what is new in the updates and what is not. So without much ado, let's get started. In the wake of Yuzu's shutdown, many feared that the Switch emulation was over. But Citron came to the rescue. Born as a fork of Yuzu, Citron was designed to pick up where Yuzu left off, allowing gamers to continue enjoying their favorite Switch titles on PC and mobile. But as with many other projects, Citron faced its own hurdles. In the late 2024, the emulator had to pause its development due to legal pressures. With Nintendo taking down many emulation projects, Citron's future was uncertain. The emulator went silent, leaving fans in limbo. Would it return or was this the end of the line for Citron? Now we are in 2025 and Citron is back with its Canary Refresh version 0.4. Packed with major improvements, this update takes everything to the next level with key upgrades across graphics rendering, memory handling and other user interface, making it much smoother experience for gamers. Now let's head to the official website and download the emulator, set it up and dive in into what is new and what is not. Now to download the emulator, head over to the official website of Citron. From there, you should see something like download latest version. Just click on it. Now here like this, scroll down until you see the downloads. Choose the platform you own. So if you are Android user, make sure you choose the Android version. And also for Linux users, you can go with the Linux and for the window users, just press on the window canary refresh to start downloading. Now for setting up the emulator, I have a complete video on it. So you can check the video description for more information on how to set it up on your platform. Now let's take a look at the change logs in this version. First up, Citron made significant upgrades in graphics and rendering. The buffer cache optimization means games will run smoother without that annoying starter or lag. They simplify the storage buffer bind logic which makes rendering a lot faster and more efficient. A huge win for the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom players, Citron has improved the rendering for underground and depth areas. This means those darker header to render section of the game will look much cleaner. Plus, they've tweaked the memory layout handling and address translation, leading to better game performance overall. If you've had issues with stuttering or crashes in demanding areas, they should fix that. Moving on to the service implementation updates, Citron has worked hard to improve support for application display services functions. This update ensures that missing functions are now in place so the emulator can handle your display settings better. And for more flexibility, they've added proper permission handling for different session types giving users more control over how the emulator runs. Additionally, display and layer management has been significantly improved, meaning your in-game visual should not be more stable, with fewer glitches when changing the screen layout or switching between apps. Citron also made major improvement to the memory management. They've enhanced error handling, which is a big deal when it comes to avoiding crashes. The emulator now handles noun pointers and unmapped memory errors much better, so meaning fewer crashes and more stability. Additionally, the update offers better error messages for memory access violation. So if something goes wrong, you will have a clear idea of what happened and how to fix it. This jerk makes for a smoother, more reliable experience overall. Now let's talk about the user interface because Citron looks better than ever. They've introduced a brand new modding dark theme for the app, which is easier on the eyes, especially for those long gaming sessions. And you will notice that the loading screen has a fresh gradient animations that makes booting up the emulator feels like a breeze. 
and for those who care about the little details, Sego UI is now the font for all details, which gives the UI a cleaner, more contemporary feel. Plus, the minus, two bars, and the dock widget has been given a complete redesign, giving Citron a polished and professional look. Under the hood, Citron has made some critical technical improvements. The NDVRV services has seen upgrades. With GPU function stops now properly implemented, this means the emulator can better mimic the functions of the Nintendo Switch GPU, resulting in improved performance and compatibility with more games. Another major win is relaxed GPU validation. This essentially means Citron is more flexible when running games on your system, allowing more games to work without the GPU causing errors and with improved error notifier handling you'll be notified right away if something goes wrong with a clear message about what needs to be fixed also they've tackled shader compilation with a more robust system that now handles tessellation and fragment stages correctly meaning that complex shaders will run more smoothly the improved shader extension compatibility also opens up more games possibility with better graphical fidelity now Citron is adding some network features. The inclusion of the QT network package brings multiplayers to the table, although it is still in early stages. They've implemented an IP input field for multiplayer room creation, which is a step closer to full online support in the future. While it's not fully polished yet, the groundwork is definitely being laid here. As for game-specific improvements, Citron now handles Tears of the Kingdom far better. The fixes for underground and dev areas mean smoother gameplay and fewer rendering issues. So, games like Super Smash Bros Ultimate and Donkey Kong Country Returns HD also benefit from these performance optimizations, giving you a better overall experience without the usual glitches. Citron also supports a variety of platforms with platform-specific builds. So, if you are on Android, there is an updated APK that includes frame generation and stabilization for supported devices. And for Linux users, Citron now offers two different builds, a native build for specific processes and compatibility builds that works on a wide range of devices. So it's all about getting the best performance, no matter your platform. So in all, Citron Canary Refresh version 0.4 is a massive update. With improvement in graphics, memory handling and network functionalities, it becomes a top contender for Switch emulation. Whether you are on PC or Android, this update will enhance your experience especially for titles like Tears of the Kingdom and Super Smash Bros Ultimate. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell for more emulation updates. See you next time.